Hello boys and girls, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Chisom and there's a short description of me in the comment section if you're interested to know more about me. And if you're an OG, <laughs> wagwan, <laughs> what the heck was that? Anyway, you guys, this is supposed to be a very serious and informative video. Um, last year in December, um, during Christmas, I spent eight days in the hospital, which included the Christmas day and It was pretty much my first experience in a Canadian hospital as someone who is currently living with um, the sickle cell disorder so um, in December I had a, a very serious episode that I needed to go to the hospital um I was having pains and all of that so but before I go into the story I think I want to kind of it's like for people that are not Nigerians or people that haven't really experienced the health insurance system in Nigeria I would like to start from what I was used to so usually when I go into the hospital in Nigeria um, okay I have sickle cell when they find out they automatically kind of assume that oh uh, I also have malaria so they will do a test they see malaria then they would you know um, cure like give admit me then give me malaria injections give me pain injections and antibiotics and a lot of fluids that's really, really how the whole thing goes um, but when it comes to in terms of payments and all of that you know you have health insurance yes but is now when you want to use it that you see that your health insurance is not doing what it's supposed to do that's when they tell you oh yeah you 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 cannot be admitted yeah your admission cannot be covered by insurance this drug cannot be covered by insurance um they'll tell you that this is so, so, and so only consultation can be covered by insurance this and that so you know like um hosp um the hospital system in nigeria is quite privatized and what that happens is that you know a lot of people going for profits which makes a lot of sense you know no shade but what these insurance companies do is that they now try a lot of possible ways to reduce the they reduce what they have to have to cover you know except maybe the insurance you're paying for is like you know like the level is the highest of the highest health insurance in nigeria maybe for the guys in ikoyi banana island that kind of thing but for the average person you know the health insurance doesn't really it's not really a benefit you you get that kind of thing so that was where i was coming from where everything was just kind of zigzag zigzag you know but the doctors weren't so i won't they weren't so communicative yes yes like you know they just put you on some drugs you don't even know what they are really putting you on you know you have to ask and Sometimes you just say, yeah, it's just this. Do you understand? That kind of thing it was just different, you know. So yeah, that was it for like the Nigerian experience. And coming to Canada, obviously, as someone that deals with sickle cell, I wanted to know what is the health system saying for people, you know, that are kind of dealing with the same thing I'm currently dealing with. And what I saw scared me. I was just saying, oh, waiting. You have to wait. The waiting time is long. Some people will see two weeks. Some people will see two, uh, two days. Some people, you know, they would like. I was like, this is not looking good for somebody that once you have an episode that needs you to be in the hospital, you need to be there right away. No waiting time. You get. You need to cut lines to be attended to like ASAP. So I was like, I was kind of anxious that. The health system here might not just be for me. I was really anxious about that. So when I when I now started having 
the episode that required me to go to the hospital we called emergency right 911 and they asked us a lot of questions like oh because my husband was the one on the phone they were asking him okay is she is she conscious is she bleeding is she this is she that you know that they just wanted to know what was what the situation was after the call um after 20 minutes we we hadn't heard anything from them so we called again and they said oh like the ambulance is actually like some minutes away so 20 minutes after they arrived so it took them 40 minutes to actually get here so i got here or they got here they asked me a lot of questions not a lot just asked questions like oh what's the problem how are you feeling where are the pains all of that then they wheeled me out into the ambulance like they wheeled me in that bed they strapped me i was just strapped like this and they wheeled me into the ambulance and um in the ambulance i was having still having a lot of pains and you know people that know no way having pains being strapped and just in one place is not the way to go so i had to they had to free me up a bit so that like blood could flow i don't know how to explain it but yeah that was what it was then when we got to the hospital we then had to wait you know they had to do all their paperwork all of that and then also triage because once you call an em on emergency and they, you get to the hospital they will have to gauge oh out of their emergencies which one takes more priority so let's just say we waited there for like an extra 30 minutes then they took us to the it's like I don't know how to explain it but it was like a walkway right you just see a lot of n the nurses station the nurses were there um people you could walk and you could see rooms so it was like we were just there like in the walkway why do i still trying to figure out where to put us right so what happened was when they took us there i was still on the bed of course and you know <clears throat> they asked them some i think was it some nurses that came first or a doctor i don't know but i vividly remember the doctor coming and asking okay like what's wrong what are you experiencing pains all of that so i t we told them obviously that i'm currently having sickle cell pains they asked me like how many like from one to ten how bad was the pain honestly if it was an if there was 11 11 was the the level but i told them 10 just know that so they know that the pain was really really like excruciating so after a while they came with like um a painkiller injection the doctor very nice of course and they listened to like you get my my plight and he he uh, before he was going to put the injection he said oh like he's only he's going to administer it slowly because the pain injection was really strong so he said if they just like I, I just push it in fast and I actually pass out so they just did that slowly and as the painkiller just entered my system you know I just you know a bit of calm temporary calm so we're there for like maybe I don't know maybe I would say one hour where we're there I, I wasn't really in tune with my surrounding anymore because I've already like zoned out because they've already injected me. So after we're there, then they now moved us to the ER, the emergency room. Um, I can't remember how the place was, but we just had like a curtain, so I could only just see myself and my husband. And um, some nurses came there. They took um, blood samples, you know, to test and everything. And I remember because. I, we stayed there overnight right and i remember waking up and i still saw because they put me on some fluid right in the er and i saw that it was the same fluid that that they gave me yesterday that was still there like the day before and i was still there so i had to communicate that oh as someone that is currently battling with sickle cell i need a lot of fluids injected in me in this at this moment um i got to realize in fact like later on many nurses actually told me that i was their first sickle cell patient so indeed i actually had to communicate a lot of things so that they are well aware that okay this is what it should be so i kept telling them i need hydration i need hydration usually like in a night i've, I've taken like two or um, three or four is the truth so later on they brought a doctor right a female doctor 
that looked Indian um, and then she told me that okay that she had actually worked with a lot of sickle cell patients and immediately my um, I just calmed down because all I wanted was somebody that understood me understood like oh I'm not I'm not being difficult I just need to communicate that this is what needs to be done to make me feel better so she told me that she had worked with a lot of sickle cell patients and I now explained to her that okay I actually do need hydration right now I've only been on this like um, over like 10 hours or I don't know how many hours I was there and later on um they moved me to the private room where they now gave me more fluids so i was moved to the private room and that was literally where i was um i think from maybe maybe from 22nd like 22nd to like 28th because that was when i i got um um discharged on the 28th of december so the we're there right the, the first of all we entered the room it was just it was different from what i was used to to be honest it was a private room i don't i'm not here to tell you that, that might, this might be your exact experience but this is my first experience i got in there had my own actually they put me on ox i was on oxygen from that 20 seconds till i left the hospital i was on oxygen because they said that my oxygen levels was low and here is me coming from nigeria that you pay for oxygen do you understand and oxygen is not something that they just give you but here in the hospital it's like there everywhere there was oxygen in the bed that they are wheeling you in there was oxygen in the wheel this is the main provision for oxygen in rooms like oxygen was like the least you know but over where i'm coming from oxygen is like ah worst case scenario but here was like oxygen was like a part of life <laughs> anyway that aside so we had they gave us breakfast lunch dinner every day every day they made sure that like we had something to eat every day they'll come check like my vitals oxygen level blood pressure um heart rate all of that they check that every day and also every day they came to collect my blood which i actually had an issue with in the sense that so as someone who is currently dealing with sickle cell and waiting on her healing i just believe that you know you shouldn't be collecting that much blood from someone who has sickle cell because i felt like i if i told anything i need more blood and you're collecting blood for me every day so i obviously explained i i i shared my concern with the with the doctor and she said oh like First of all, I, I think she said it doesn't work that way. And secondly, she said that that's literally the only way to know what, you know, what is, what's going on, maybe where my body is at, how I'm reacting to the drugs and all of that. Fair. Although, like, a part of me still highly believes or strongly believes that taking blood from a sickle cell warrior every day is detrimental. But And, you know, it's one of those beliefs that... Even if a doctor with 100 years tells you otherwise, you just be like, mm, I still, I, I stand on this particular business. <laughs> on this hill, I stand. But yeah, so that was it, you know. I started getting better. And one thing I really appreciate, I the nurses were really nice. You know, they were really, they were, they were really, like, they listened to me. They were nice. There was one particular nurse that gave me a hug. You know, and 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 they were very clear. They were very communicative. Some even told me that I am actually their first sickle cell case. So they really listened to me as well. When I said, "Oh, my pains, are, these pains are back," they would bring back. They would bring some painkillers. Obviously, like as I got better, the the type of painkillers administered to me were like got less stronger or stronger. Like they got weaker and weaker. So they would administer painkillers to me. Obviously, on the instructions of the doctor not on their own instructions so the doctor would have told them oh if she says she has pains give her this painkiller so whenever i say oh i have these pains they give me you know um the appropriate painkillers you know that kind of thing one even gave me a hug because i mean uh, well it is what it is so the nurses were actually nice i uh, and stuff and one thing that stood out for me is they're very communicative like if they are giving you 
um a drug they let you know okay they're just about to give you this is this is so 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 and so drug that they are putting on you this is the, like they always keep you informed obviously like for legal reasons they also have to keep you informed but it's something that i wasn't used to because over here in nigeria it just oh what is it uh, antibiotics and that's even if you ask do you get they will even tell you like that you just leave them to do their thing so that was one thing yeah. they will let you know at every step of the way oh we, we we are putting this drug in we are giving you this drug now this is what it is and all of that and even when they were taking my blood for test because i was already concerned i will ask them okay what is this test for and i'll ask them okay what is the result of this test as well so that was pretty much it so i started getting better and the migraine kicked in so there was i was getting better with the pains were getting better then the migraine just came from nowhere when i tell you this migraine is a kind of migraine where you're just like god i don't want to do this anymore like you just like god just 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 let it end because i you'll be hearing your heart beats imagine hearing your pulse like you you're hearing your pulse in your head that's how bad this migraine was for me and it lasted for days it, it got so bad that they had to take me give them um, i had to have a ct scan done on my brain i had to have a ct scan done on my brain to make sure that the brain is is working it's working as as it should i had a ct scan i didn't want to know how much a ct scan would have cost in nigeria a whole ct scan a brain scan I had that done because the migraine was so so bad so eventually they gave me things for the migraine and there was a time that you know obviously we already have a doctor then one doctor just came from nowhere and he was like oh he's my new doctor for today and you know he has been speaking with the with the hematologist and they decided that they are going to give me a blood transfusion now the former doctor that was working with us told us specifically that oh um, a blood transfusion will be her last her last go-to resort because you know when she said something in the line of when you give people blood transfusions is when they don't really need it the time that they will need it the blood transfusion might not be as effective something like in that light so we just told the doctor that respectfully this is what our former doctor told us and now this is what you're telling us if you don't mind like we'd like to hear from the other doctor that has been with us literally from day one so she came she said oh wow that that doctor that is a good thing we actually waited on her that maybe the doctor did not read her notes or something i don't know but eventually because the migraine continued eventually i had a blood a blood transfusion done but she was like okay it's not like maybe usually they'll give like three pints or something but i had just one pint given to me and that was okay and immediately that happened i felt like the migraine gets so much better so the relationship between migraine and well that's that's not this video i'm just narrating my experience so yeah the migraine got better and when i started getting better as well they told me i had to start working like walking you know around the hospital you will see clips you know them start walking and i start walking to just keep my oxygen my oxygen levels higher because they said they wouldn't be able to discharge me if my oxygen levels were as low as it was so i started trying to be active and all of that and the oxygen levels got uh better and better you know so um i think i think i've pretty much covered it in the sense that okay in terms of racism because first of all that what what i saw with my eyes we were the only black people i saw from 21st to 28th only black people me and my husband was there racism i did we didn't experience any racism everybody by the special grace of god everybody was nice everybody was kind you know in fact i want to use this opportunity to really just give a shout out to people that work in the medical space here in canada i saw it firsthand it's not easy they are really they are, like that they are really quite understaffed you know they have a lot of patients that they are handling surely the nurses at least because that's what i could see i couldn't see much of what goes with goes on with the doctors you know a special shout out to you guys it's not easy and i'm really thankful for the experience i had the people there 
in the hospital I was in, they were so nice. They they listened to me. There was no racism. You know, all the fears I had, oh time, the oh the waste time, like waiting time, it wasn't that it wasn't the case for for me. Obviously, sickle cell is a big thing, so it makes sense that they will not want to make you wait that that long. But yes, the waiting time, there was no waiting time. Um there was no long waiting time. I didn't experience any racism. Nobody tagged me as a as a painkiller addict. You you get they listen to me. Oh, I need more um fluid. They will talk to the doctor. That's why the doctor says, Oh, I need painkillers, they'll provide it. You you get that kind of thing. So it was it was it was an overall good experience. Do I want to go back there? No. Because I don't want to be sick. <laughs> it's not the will of God for me to be sick. So no. But if you're coming to Canada and if I probably won't talk about that, the the next best thing is cost. How much did we pay? We paid zero, zero Canadian dollars for that for that very very um very very good service, you know, zero dollars. But I would say though that as a, as an international student, I have health insurance. I currently pay 70, 75 dollars per month on health insurance. You can do the multiplication if you're in Nigeria, 75 times 1k that's 75k. Pay that a month on health insurance right now. Obviously, if you're working, your company covers the health insurance, but right now, that's what I pay health insurance as an international student. So the way the medical space here is it's it's not it's not privatized it's more of government run so i'm and i think that's where they use the health insurance the taxes and all of that to make the health system as good as it is the health system here my experience my first experience was good and has been good so far so if if you're someone who is dealing with sickle cell and you're thinking oh how how is it is it going to be nice is it going to be conducive is it going in my experience here in bc british columbia i haven't had a better experience health like health wise in the hospital all my life that's what i will say the doctor at the end of the day recommend then recommended me to a specialist hospital here in um, vancouver for sickle cell so as i speak to you next month we have an uh, we have an appointment in that hospital so from there they would just personalize things and we just know how to go from there i think we even found out what the issue was right because when it comes to um the way sickle cell pains work is that um sometimes our Im immune system can be low and then we are not will not get an infection right we get an infection and then it now triggers a crisis so back in nigeria a lot of the times it was malaria that triggered the major crisis for me but here during winter obviously there's no there's no mosquito here so i was i was really curious like, okay what caused this i want to find out that uh, it was pneumonia pneumonia infection caused this damn thing <laughs> so because during the winter it's cold people tend to get sicker during the winter even the doctor said it so how much more someone that has sickle cell so i was advised as i'm going to school start as i'm going to start going to school physically i have to always wear a mask so if you see my vlogs in school i have to that's the reason why i'm wearing a mask i have a, a hand sanitizer i have to just keep clean you know because the winter season People get sicker it's easier to get an infection so i need to protect myself so that's pretty much it i hope this video has given you a lot of insights on a first-hand experience because when i tell you guys i think i mentioned it at the beginning of this video i searched and searched i wanted to see firsthand what is the canadian health system in bc like for a sickle cell warrior and i did not see anything concrete like an experience i could only see oh maybe other people's experience oh waiting time all of these da 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 is bad is this i was already anxious so i'm hoping that this video actually helps someone this was my own experience no addition no subtraction you've seen the videos that was pretty much it please like comment subscribe share 
people need this video i didn't i didn't see one of this type of video on youtube i didn't see one so please like and share so that youtube can recommend it to people that are looking for such things right yeah thank you and i'll see you in my next one bye hi guys so this is the 25th of december 2023 and so far, I've been in the hospital for four days and I'm much better now. Um, th this morning, I, I was having a lot of bad headache, but um, my doctor changed my meds and I think it has helped. Um, apparently, it was because of pneumonia that I had a pneumonia infection. Where I got it, I don't know, but apparently that's the reason why I had this major episode. Well, all in all, the praise of God will not depart from my lips, even in this tough time. Um, I we can see God's hands still. He has been very. He has been here. The process has been good i'm grateful to god for such wonderful health care i'm grateful to god honestly i'm thankful to the nurses the doctors and everything i'm sure by now if you're watching this clip out i've given you guys a preamble of where my head was at before before we booked an emergency i was scared and skeptical because i didn't know what to expect but god has been good um by god's grace if things go well i would be discharged tomorrow which is the 26th i'm here with my wonderful husband uh, i'm not sure he wants to show on the camera because you guys already know he's not a camera person but Honestly, I don't know what I would have done without him. I love him so much. And I've just been thanking him every day for being at my side. Baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys can see I'm still on oxygen. I haven't brushed my teeth in days. I need to brush my teeth now. Because it's, it's critical. This is critical. It's, it's not. This is this is not the behavior of of an eat girl. <laughs> the teeth needs to be brushed, and I need to look pink. Anyway, I just came to give you guys this additional clip. Um, I'll see you. And I see you. Please just thank God on my behalf. And a big kudos to the Canadian healthcare system. Honestly, guys, it's a discovery. Honestly, I've never seen it or experienced healthcare this way. And I'm just grateful to God to be able to experience healthcare in this manner. I'm grateful. All right. See you later. Bye, guys.